Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special chapel. This week is sometimes referred to as Holy Week or even Passion Week, as we remember both the death as well as the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we are going to be blessed as we hear a, a wonderful message, an Easter message from 1 Corinthians 15 from Pastor Jason Platt of the Montrose Baptist Church. Pastor Platt is the husband of Mrs. Tanya Platt, who's one of our wonderful preschool assistants, and is also the father of Emily, Kaylee, and Kylie, upper school students here at Christian Heritage Academy. So as we begin this chapel, I'd like to invite you to join me as we pray together. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship together in this chapel. And Lord, especially as we take a few moments to reflect on the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we celebrate on Good Friday and all that that means, but then also on his glorious resurrection, Lord, which changes everything for us as believers in Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I pray that for all of us, as we participate in this chapel service, but then also on Good Friday and then on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, that you would draw all of us closer to yourself, that we would know you more, that we would love you more, and be forever grateful for what you have done for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. to the king. Hosanna, Hosanna, and to the crowded streets. Thousands came to see him, to cheer as he walked by. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna was their cry. Matthew 21, if you want to read in your Bible, that's 1 through 11. And again, that's Matthew 21. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anything, anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken in the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, 
colt, of a, a fowl, of a beast, of a burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks, put on the, them their cloaks. The, and he sat on them. Most of the crowds spread their cloaks on the road, but others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd was shouting before him, and, fought, and those who followed him were shouting, Hose, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet of Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Dr. Hertzberg, teachers, staff, parents, alumni, supporters, friends of Christian Heritage Academy, I have something very important to tell you. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Well, hello, Mrs. Platt. How are you today? Good. Would you like to come and read us? the scripture. I would love to. Thank you. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, you've already got it open. I do. Verses 1 through 11. All right. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Thank you, Mrs. Platt. That was wonderful. Now, well, in case you didn't know, I am Mr. Platt. That means I'm also Mrs. Platt's super blessed husband. It means I'm also the super blessed dad of John, Emily, Kylie, and Carly. At church, people call me Pastor Jason, but my true identity is who I am in Christ. I'm a child of God the Father. I'm a co-heir of Christ the Son, a temple of the Holy Spirit, and a member with you and all the believers in the body of Christ. So today, I'm excited to show you how in Jesus Christ, we can move from hopeless to hopeful to hope. Yes. From hopeless to hopeful to hope yes. As we trust in the Lord, we bring hope to the world. And I am so excited to look into God's word with you today. You know, without Christ, we are without hope in the world. But with Christ, we are full of hope. So full that our hope overflows into the world around us. That's what it means to move from hopeless to hopeful to hope yes. I want to ask you, have you ever felt hopeless, maybe lost or stuck? Did you share your feelings with anyone? What did they say? Did their response encourage you or did their words perhaps make you feel a little bit worse about your situation? God's word, the Bible says that without Christ, we're all in a hopeless situation. I want to share with you a few verses from Ephesians. From Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, 
following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of humankind. Wow, that's a pretty bleak situation. Listen to what we read in verse 12. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, God's people, and strangers to the covenants of promise. Listen, having no hope and without God in the world. Wow, that's a pretty rough place to be. No hope and without God in the world. That's some pretty bad news. The scripture says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages or penalty for our sin is death, separation from God eternally. Sin and separation from God are really bad news, but you know, it's the bad news of sin that shows us our need of a savior and the good news that we find in Jesus. He's our sufficient Savior, our risen Lord. Jesus is our returning King. This weekend, we're celebrating Easter, Resurrection Sunday. God's Word tells us that if Christ is not raised, we're still in a hopeless situation. Without the resurrection, there is no gospel, there is no good news, there are just more and more bad news. Remember that question I asked you earlier? Have you ever felt hopeless? lost or stuck. I remember one time when I was in fourth grade, I got lost in Washington, D.C. I was there with family on, and friends on sort of like a big field trip to visit Washington, D.C., and we were riding the subway. Now, I came from a small town, and we weren't very used to subways and escalators, and escalators were really exciting. So we were riding up the escalator and down, me and a friend of mine. He was younger than I was, so I was sort of in charge. And we rode back up again and back down again there at the subway and back up again. And then when we came to go back down, a police officer was there keeping everyone safe and said, I'm sorry, you can't go back down into the subway right now. Now, he didn't know that our parents were down there, and I should have told him he would have let us go. But instead, I just started walking off into Washington, D.C. And it took quite a while before my parents and my friend's parents finally found us. Maybe you know what it's like to feel lost and to get that sense of hopelessness and fear that comes. Jesus says that anyone who has not turned from their sin and trusted in him is lost. But he also says that all heaven rejoices when a lost sinner repents and trusts in him. Just like someone might rejoice when something that is very valuable to them is lost and then found. Just as a parent would rejoice when a, a child who has wandered away from the truth and from the family and from the love of the home returns back and they're reconciled to them. So all heaven rejoices when we are found in Jesus Christ. Maybe you felt stuck in a bad situation, like there was no way out. Could have been a bad grade. Could have been a test that you didn't study for. Maybe a conflict with a close friend economic hardship at home or the endless days of COVID quarantine. Maybe you or someone you love was sick and suffering. Even worse, maybe you lost someone you care about and can't imagine life without them. It feels pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Have you ever met someone who seemed to be in a hopeless situation? Did you try to help? What did you say to them? I felt hopeless before, like I shared with you, I've been lost. I've also been stuck. In fact, one time I was literally stuck. When I was the same age as some of the kids in first grade or second grade, my brother and I were visiting the local shopping mall. He liked to look at coin in the coin collector's booth. So he was a coin collector and I was interested in gumballs. And so after visiting the coin collector's booth, we went to the gumball machines. And I put my quarter in and I turned the crank and nothing happened. 
And my brother, being older and wiser, you know, the coin collector, he said, why don't you stick your thumb in the gumball machine and maybe that will loosen up the gumballs and one will come out. So sure enough, I dutifully stuck my thumb into the gumball machine. My brother turned the crank and my thumb got stuck. And I was there for like an hour and everybody was trying to get my thumb unstuck. First the coin collector guy walked by, then the manager came by, then finally my parents came. Finally, they were about to call the fire department and I literally heard someone mention the words jaws of life <laughs> before the manager got the good idea of pouring liquid hand soap into the gumball machine and my thumb slid out. So I've been lost, I've been stuck, literally, but it's nothing compared to what it is to be lost in our sin or to be stuck in a wrong relationship with God without hope in Christ, without hope in the world. You know, genuine, real hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood 
and righteousness. Authentic hope is not a wish that we cast into the universe like someone might toss a coin into a fountain. Real hope is living hope, full confidence, lifelong trust, rock-solid reliance in the risen, reigning, and returning Christ. Without the risen Christ, we are hopeless. If you have your Bibles open still to 1 Corinthians 15, listen to what the Apostle Paul says. Apparently, some people in the church in Corinth were a little bit confused about the resurrection of the dead. It was popular belief in their culture that people died, and that was it. And so, Paul is pointing out to them that that's not the case. In fact, if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ himself has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, there are some pretty serious consequences. So without the risen Christ, we are hopeless, utterly, eternally hopeless, unless Christ is raised. Paul says if there is no resurrection, Christ has not been raised. If there is no resurrection, Christian ministry is useless and all preachers are liars. Listen to what he says in verse 12. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we have testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. Listen to this. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If there is no Easter, no Resurrection Sunday, if Christ died on the cross and stayed dead, then our situation is utterly and completely hopeless if there is no resurrection. But we know this is not all there is, and there is so much more in Christ. You see, without the risen, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, we are hopeless. But in Christ, because of his resurrection, we are hope-filled. The Bible says that because Christ is risen, he will raise his people. Listen to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. As in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Just as Christ has been raised, so all of us who are in Christ will be raised. Because Christ is risen, death has been conquered the scripture says, because Christ is risen, life has meaning. Listen to this. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. That's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. In the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Because of the resurrection, our new life in Jesus Christ, the hope that we have, all that we do in the Lord has meaning, has purpose, has significance, not just for now, but forever. Hi, I'm Sophia Landreth, and I'm going to be reading Matthew 28, 1 through 9. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, 
Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took, the whole, ho took hold of his feet and worshipped him. So we've moved from hopeless without Jesus to hope filled in Jesus. And finally, not just being full with hope, but we move from hopeless all the way to hope yes. Hope yes. That means that we have a message of hope to share with the world. We have a reason for hope that we can tell other people about. Take a look at 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is 1 Peter 1 verse 3. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. See that? It's not a dead hope, but because of the resurrection of Jesus, it's a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept, reserved in heaven just for you and for me and for all who have turned from their sins and trusted in Jesus Christ. Take a look at 1 Peter 3 and verse 13. It says, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? So generally speaking, if you do that which is right, you're not going to suffer harm. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, your opponents, nor be troubled. Check this out. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy or set apart. Honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Always ready to make a defense when someone else notices there's something different about you. When they say, hey, what is it that's different about you? You're ready to say what's different about me is Jesus. It's his hope that's in me, a living hope that I have in Jesus Christ, my Lord. And do this with gentleness and respect. I was so blessed a couple of weeks ago when I had the blessing of being out in our community, serving other people, and someone had gone through the line and received the food and other things that we were passing out. And as they were headed back to their car, they stopped and they turned around and they said, there is something different about you. What is it that is different? There's a, there's a light within you. And boy, when we are living that Holy Spirit filled life and God is blessing other people through us, that just gives us an opportunity and we need to be ready. As I said to that person, what's different about me is Jesus. It's the love of God in me. And that just overflows into a, a love for other people. And they said, yes, that must be what it is. I pray that you too can experience those same opportunities as you love the world around you and as you give a reason, a defense for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. So in Christ, we can move from hopeless to hopeful to hope yes. Because the Spirit of God has moved us, our calling is now to share our hope with the world. You know, after his resurrection and before his ascension, Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples, followers of Jesus Christ baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe and to obey everything I have commanded you. And Jesus said, Surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. You know, our family just went on a fairly big road trip. Before we left, we had to get our car fixed up and invest in it a little bit so that we could take the road trip and get to where we were going safely and then come back safely. And that got me thinking. Without Christ, we're kind of like a, a broken down car. 
hopeless, can't move on our own, just stuck, not serving the purpose for which we were made. But with Christ, we're, we're given new life, we're given new hope, we're reinvigorated, we're refueled, or if you drive an electric car, we're recharged. But some of us who share the risen life of Christ are kind of like a shiny new car that's full of gas sitting in the garage, too afraid to open the garage door and to go out into the world. I have a confession to make. When I was the age of a lot of you who are watching and listening today, I was a Christian school introvert. And I was at sometimes rather shy, oftentimes rather shy about my faith in Jesus Christ. And looking back, I know and I grieve over opportunities that I missed to share Christ with friends around me who did not have the hope that I am so blessed to have in Jesus. I've learned to be confident in sharing that hope, and I pray that you will as well. You know, cars aren't meant for garages. They're meant to go. A ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are made for. You and I, likewise, were made for a mission. We've got to get out of the salt shaker and into the world. We've got a light to shine, but we certainly can't keep it hidden. We've got to let it shine. Jesus wants us to go and make disciples. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to bear witness. God the Father has a worldwide rescue plan, and he's enlisted us to share it with the world. Now, if you don't know the hope of which I speak, I pray you turn from your sins and you trust in Jesus. As we're remembering this very weekend, he died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. He said, it is finished. He paid the price in full. He was buried and he rose from the grave in triumph. And anyone who believes in Jesus as their Savior who turns from their sins and trusts in Christ, believing that he died for their sins and rose from the grave, that person can be saved. Jesus says, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, if you found hope in Christ, I pray that you experience the fullness of resurrection hope. In fact, I pray you'll be so full of hope that it overflows and it spills over into every conversation, every interaction, every friendship, every relationship. I pray people will constantly be asking you for the reason for your hope. Hey man, times are tough. How is it that you're so full of hope? Hey, I noticed you didn't do too well on that test the other day, but still the light within you shines. What's the difference about you? I pray then that you'll be ready to give them an answer for the reason for the hope that you have. And what is that answer? What is that reason? It's Jesus. Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Jesus is the reason for my hope. And he can be your reason too. Through the risen Lord Jesus Christ, you can move from hopeless to hope-filled to hope yes. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you so very, very much for Jesus, our risen, wonderful, resurrected, conquering, sufficient Savior, our living Lord, our returning King. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will be so filled with our hope in Christ, this new and living hope, an anchor for our souls in the storms of life, that we will share it with others, that it will just be a part of who we are, and that anyone who comes into contact will, uh, with us will know that we have been with Jesus because his hope so permeates our lives. I pray these things in Jesus' wonderful and beautiful name. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much, CHA, for letting me share with you today. And may God bless and keep you in his loving care. Thank you, Pastor Platt, for a wonderful message. We want to wish all of you a safe 
and blessed Easter. We'll see you back here on Tuesday, April 6th. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all.